The king is dead. The door remains shut until we finish our business. What's a winner? Seizure! It is treason at the least! Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is my House of the Dragon video all about the Green Council. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. But episode 9 is called The Green Council. It's a reference to the separate small council that Alicent's Greens create when they attempt a coup of sorts to execute what Alicent believes to be Viserys' dying wishes that her son with him, Aegon II, be named the next king. Before this, you simply have the small council. Like, the small council is meant to support the king. It's meant to be relatively impartial, just supporting whatever his wishes are. But you have this whole idea of the divided allegiance in the Red Keep because of what's happened with Team Green and Team Black. Team Alicent versus Team Rhaenyra, even though Alicent is not trying to put herself on the Iron Throne. You have this question over what people believe Viserys' wishes to actually be. Like, did he actually want Aegon II to become king? Or should they uphold Viserys' wishes that they heard before this that Rhaenyra should become the next queen? As you would expect, most people on the small council would spend a long time arguing, debating about the matter. But clearly, that is not what happens. Clearly, Otto Hightower tries to move as quickly as possible to prevent anybody that supports Rhaenyra from doing anything about them naming Aegon II the next king. But you have to remember what's happened in the last six years since the events of the previous episode when Alicent attacked Rhaenyra with the Valyrian dagger. Rhaenyra married Daemon Targaryen and then took the family back to Dragonstone. She'd already been on Dragonstone for a while since then, away from court. The longer she's away from court, the less influence she has with her father and with the small council itself, which is already kind of a problem. Now another six years have gone by, even though she's had a couple more children with Daemon, like a couple things have happened in the six years. But in that time, a couple other small council members have been rotated, so the small council has changed in the last six years. And since the incident with the Valyrian dagger, things cooled between Alicent and Rhaenyra, and they talked even less. Like, Rhaenyra became even less involved with what was happening at court with her father and the small council. They talked a little bit about that during their reunion at the beginning of last week's episode. They hadn't seen each other in so long. Like, ah, look at all the changes you made around the Red Keep. It looks like you got rid of a lot of the Targaryen heraldry, and now the Red Keep looks more like the Great Sept. So before the small council transforms into the green council, officially, so to speak, most of them had already been firmly team green. And the whole idea is that before the Dance of the Dragons had gotten started, before Viserys' death, even though Alicent had been sitting in his place at the head of the small council, they'd at least try to attempt for them to be impartial, with them serving everyone's interests. Most of them had assumed previously that Rhaenyra would become queen on Viserys' death, and her son Jacaris would become the heir apparent. But with the ending of episode 7, Viserys hopped up on Milk of the Poppy, mistakenly thinking he was talking to Rhaenyra. He spoke to Alicent about the remainder of Aegon's prophecy of the prince who was promised, A Song of Ice and Fire, The Long Night, how he firmly believed the prophecy was true. And even though Alicent thought it was all gibberish because she'd never heard Aegon's prophecy before, she didn't know about the dagger. Viserys kept repeating the name Aegon and Future King separately, and he was referring to Aegon the First Targaryen, but because he only said Aegon, he didn't say Aegon the First or Aegon the Conqueror. She just picked that out because their son was also named Aegon, and separately when he said all those things about him being king, then separately about his future lying, and then separately about uniting the realm. Like, it was all kind of broken up as different phrases. How terrible things would happen unless this all came to pass. Her brain filled in all the wrong gaps and just assumed that he meant something terrible would happen unless Aegon II became king. And one of her big things is that she's got this Ned Stark level of belief in doing your duty, even if you don't like what you're doing, doing what powerful people like the king, the people in your family ask of you, like she'd always done what her father told her to do, even if she didn't like it. So at this moment, even though she just got done telling Rhaenyra that she would make a fine queen, she believes Viserys' wishes must be upheld, even though that was all based on a mistake. So Viserys dies, she tells the regular small council about everything that happened, this conversation with him. Because none of them were there, nobody can say anything different, like they just take what she says word for word. It seems like it's still dark, like it's the wee hours of the morning right after they learn of his death. And even though it's a mistake after she tells them about his wishes, clearly what you can see is that chaos ensues. You'd expect nothing less from a Game of Thrones show. And remember, the current small council, even though some of them are firmly Team Green, like Otto Hightower here, are supposed to be relatively impartial when it comes to favoring Alicent or Rhaenyra. They just merely execute the will of the king like the laws that have already been laid out. So even if they don't like Rhaenyra, they still at least have to uphold the king's wishes. But what Alicent says basically throws everything into complete chaos. Now remember this, before they pull off a coup, 
The current small council, as you're seeing sitting here, is Otto Hightower, Hand of the King, obviously firmly Team Green. He's the one that's kind of pulling the strings, kind of pushing Allison around the board here, playing that game of chess, playing the game of thrones. The other important thing you'll notice here is that Kristen Cole is standing at her other shoulder because he's so firmly Team Allison. This whole time, he's been a regular member of the Kingsguard, but he's also been part of her personal detail, like her personal member of the Kingsguard. As she said previously, he's supposed to uphold her wishes over the wishes of the king. Earlier when she demanded he attack young Lucerus, he paused for just a second because he's like, wait a minute, you want me to cut out this young boy's eye? Normally, he'd be expected to do whatever Allison told him to do. The problem is, is that before this, like going back to the time of Aegon the Conqueror, the creation of the Kingsguard, none of the Kingsguard had ever been asked to do something against the wishes of the king. So that's why he pauses for a second, like no queen thus far has asked us to defy the wishes of the king. Then you have Tylan Lannister of House Lannister, who has long since been master of ships, already hasn't liked Rhaenyra that much because a long time ago she rejected his brother when they proposed a marriage linking the future of House Lannisters as the future king consort. Even though the Lannisters are already very powerful, very rich right now, had they become King Consort, they would have been even more powerful. Jasper Wilde has been the Master of Laws for the past six years, at least. He's also been an Allison supporter over Rhaenyra in all that time. Larys Strong hasn't officially been on the Small Council, but he's been unofficially Allison's Master of Whispers since they were younger, like going way back, far longer than most of the current Small Council have been sitting on the Council. And the current Grand Maester, Orwell, has been sitting on the small council for the past six years, succeeding Melos, who he had previously supported when he was serving King Viserys. So Orwell has been serving in the Red Keep for a long time. Then there's old Lord Beesbury, Lord Dear Me. He's been Master of Coin ever since King Jaehaerys' reign, long before Viserys became king. So he's been on the small council probably longer than Otto Hightower, because Otto Hightower was also Jaehaerys' final hand of the king, but he only served Jaehaerys for a little while before his death, before the transition to King Viserys. And right now, Harold Westerling has been Lord Commander of the Kingsguard for a long time. So you remember back when Allison asked Kristen Cole to cut out Lucerys' eye, Harold Westerling was like, well, wait a minute, what are you doing here, buddy? So it seems like Harold Westerling is at least trying to be impartial in all this. But as you see, Allison Hightower tells her father, Otto Hightower, what happened with Viserys about his wishes. Otto Hightower's gears start moving in his head. He tries to pull off this quick coup, and it throws a small council into complete chaos. And it seems like Lord Beesbury is screaming about treason because he opposes them actually pulling off a coup. Like, no, no, we can't name Aegon II king just because you heard something in Viserys' dying wishes. We need to talk about this for a little while. But Otto Hightower doesn't want to have anything to do with that. And it seems like Kristen Cole, firmly Team Green, cuts his head off like he pulls his sword on him. So it seems like everybody that was sitting on the small council who wasn't already firmly Team Green at the sight of Lord Beesbury losing his head immediately switched their allegiance to Team Green. And either Kristen Cole winds up killing Harold Westerling in the ensuing coup, but it seems like the Kingsguard allegiance is divided itself, like the Kingsguard fights other Kingsguard. So essentially, Kristen Cole replaces Harold Westerling as the Lord Commander Kingsguard of the Green Council. And also, I believe that Tylan Lannister winds up replacing the now dead Lord Beesbury as the new Master of Coin. Lannister's rich of gold, it makes sense that they would be Master of Coin at some point. But basically, anyone who'd been impartial before this is now either dead, gone, like they take off, or they flip their allegiance to the Greens. Thus, the small council becomes the Green Council, the title of the episode. The whole reason why they call them the Greens is because of Allison's green gown that she's been known for wearing. Like, she's worn different types of gowns, but they've all been green ever since she was younger, since Rhaenyra's wedding to Laner Valerian. The reason why Allison chose green is because green is the color of the flame of the historical House High Tower that they light when they go to war. So the whole idea is that at that moment, she was declaring war on Rhaenyra, so to speak. Even though the actual Targaryen Civil War, the Dance of the Dragons, doesn't really start till this particular episode, till the naming of the Green Council and then trying to put Aegon II on the Iron Throne. That's like the official beginning of the Dance of the Dragons. The other cool Easter egg, the cool connection with the events later in the timeline on the Game of Thrones series is that Marjorie Tyrell is Alicent's descendant through her cousin, through Alicent's cousin. Currently during the events of this series, the Tyrell still rule over the Reach. That started during Aegon's Conquest, or after Aegon's Conquest. They took control of the Reach after Aegon's conquest because House Gardner refused to bend the knee to Aegon, so he killed them and basically replaced them with the Tyrells. One of the reasons why green is such an important color to House Hightower and to Allison, obviously, later is because that's tied to the history behind House Gardner and Garth Greenhand in the Reach. Old Town is in the Reach, so technically they've been a vassal house of House Gardner this whole time for thousands and thousands of years. 
Garth Greenhand historically is supposed to have been the first High King of the First Men thousands of years before the Andals invaded. So even though when you think of the color green you mostly think of the Tyrells, technically that goes back to Garth Greenhand in House Gardener. But that's also why House Hightower would have used the green flame and lit that in the High Tower during times of war. Because historically they had supported the Reach and the Gardeners. At least until Aegon's conquest. The reason why they survived is because the High Towers and the Tyrells both supported Aegon. So after the conquest Aegon rewarded them with much higher positions which is how the High Towers wound up so close to the Iron Throne. But my full episode 9 video will post later tonight after they release it. If you have any questions about what's going on during the episode just leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to add them to my episode video. Everyone click here for my full episode 9 video. I'll update the link as soon as I post that and click here for all my other House of the Dragon videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.